Hey guys, it's Ryan. In this video, we're going to continue talking about oral pathology and we'll talk specifically about immunologic diseases affecting the oral mucosa. So these conditions are related to autoimmune or hyperimmune reactions to known or often unknown stimuli. So autoimmune is when the immune system attacks its own body, whereas hyperimmune is where the immune system just kind of goes overboard in response to some stimulus. So first we're going to talk about the most common immunologic mucosal uh, condition, and that's aphthous ulcers, also uh, referred to as canker sores. So aphthous ulcers, 99% um, of the time, affect non-keratinized tissue. So this includes all the lining mucosa, like labial mucosa, buccal mucosa, alveolar mucosa, and the floor of the mouth, the soft palate, and the ventral surface of the tongue. Basically all the unattached areas. In this picture we see um, pretty big, a pretty sizable aphthous ulcer on the labial mucosa of the lower lip. So this is in stark contrast to something we've already talked about, recurrent herpes simplex virus, which either is on the vermilion border uh, in herpes labialis, which is a keratinized tissue, or on the hard palate or attached gingiva, also keratinized tissues, if it's intraoral recurrent herpes. So that is a very, very classic way to differentiate between aphthous ulcers, which are on non-keratinized tissue, and herpes simplex, the recurrent form of herpes simplex, which is on keratinized tissues only. So we have different um, sizes. Like I said, this one's a pretty sizable one. Um, there's minor form, which would heal without scarring, and major form, which would heal with scarring. So that's just an um, easy thing to kind of commit to memory there. Um, Sutton disease is another name for the major form, the larger um, aphthous ulcers. And we have another uh, another syndrome here. This is Bessett's syndrome. And it's a multi-system vasculitis that causes aphthous-type ulcers of oral and genital areas and inflammation of the eye. So for Bessett's, just remember a triad of lesions affecting oral, genital, and eye, or ocular. Treatment is only really necessary for the most um, serious form of aphthous ulcer, which would be the Bessett syndrome, and then you could use corticosteroids. And remember, steroids are anti-inflammatory. Anything that's involving a hyper or autoimmune response where the immune system is overreacting to something, a steroid is a perfect, um, perfect treatment modality because it's going to be calming down the immune system and um, calming down the inflammation. So that's aphthous ulcer. Next we have erythema multiforme, which often uh, occurs on the lips, but can occur anywhere on the skin and mucosa. So um, it's pretty messy looking. This is a one maybe more um, serious example of it. Um, we have minor form and major form yet again. The minor form is related to a herpes simplex hypersensitivity, whereas the major form is related to a drug sensitivity. So again, another pretty simple thing, um, but worth committing to memory. And then we have yet another syndrome. This is Stevens-Johnson syndrome. And it's actually just another name for a major form of uh, erythema multiforme. One way to remember is that um, erythema is referring to this redness, multiforme. There are multiple forms of it. I don't know if that's why it's called that, but it's just a nice thing to help you remember. Oh yeah, there's the herpes simplex one and then there's the drug one. Um, so that's, that's enough for this one. Next we have angioedema, and this is an allergic reaction to drug or food contact, physical contact with um, some one of these things. It results in this characteristic diffuse swelling of the lips, um, also could uh, involve the neck or the face. It's mediated by mast cell release of IgE and histamines. That's probably the most important thing to remember is this um, mast cell IgE and histamine um, kind of reaction 
being a part of angioedema. The treatment, um, which is logical, is antihistamines because we want to counteract the release of these histamines. So um, if you can remember all this and tie it all together, uh, it'll help you remember all you need to know about angioedema. Uh, next we have Wegener's granulomatosis, which again, like angioedema, is an allergic reaction, but this time to an inhaled antigen, not a direct contact. Um, the most characteristic oral manifestation of this is called strawberry gingivit gingivitis, and you can see it in this picture. Um, sort of looks, I guess, like a strawberry where it's a little bit stippled with this bright red um, kind of appearance, almost like seeds are in there. So that's a strawberry gingivitis. Treatment, again, we're going back to corticosteroids and cyclophosphamide. Lichen planus is another very, very common um, immune, immunologic lesion. This involves T lymphocytes targeting and destroying basal keratinocytes. And um, basal, cell, basal zone vac vacuolization and sawtooth uh, repegs are secondary to this destruction. So um, sawtooth repegs, I didn't know that this, this was such a commonly tested thing, but that came up in quite a few practice problems I saw. So that's something I would definitely remember about lichen planus. And the other thing to know is that there are two uh, common different forms of it. The first is reticular, and this involves um, this white lacy Wickham striae, or striae, which are these, um, again, lacy kind of ribbon-like, net-like, mesh-like, whatever you want to call it, white little um, stripes here. Reticular form is the more common form of lichen planus, and erosive is probably the second most common. Now you'll notice it also involves the same Wickham striae, but it also has the addition of red ulcerations surrounding the white lacy um, lesions. Treatment, again, we're talking about the immune system, so we're going to be using corticosteroids. Next we have lupus, erythematosus, or just called lupus. Again, you kind of getting a theme here, we have multiple types for each of these conditions. This one we have the discoid chronic type is the first one we'll talk about. And this involves, conveniently enough, disc-like lesions of facial skin, which we can see in this picture here, these um, discs manifesting on the facial skin. There are also oral lesions that actually mimic the appearance of erosive lichen planus that we just talked about. There is also a systemic acute type of lupus. This is when you have multiple organ involvement, hence the systemic nature, and the characteristic butterfly rash over the bridge of the nose, which is kind of like um, this here. And it also involves autoantibodies due to its systemic nature. So we can run something called an ANA test, which is um, something you would do when autoantibodies are involved. Um, treatment is with corticosteroids yet again. And now we have scleroderma, which um, literally translates to hard skin, scleroderma, and it refers to hardening of the skin and connective tissue. Now, how does this apply to the dental world? Well, if you can think of the skin hardening and the connective tissue being tougher, it's going to make opening the mouth um, a bit more difficult. So we're going to have restricted opening and uniform widening of PDL space. Next we have pemphigus vulgaris, uh, which is the first of two types of these um, diseases that we're going to talk about. So pemphigus vulgaris is supra-basilar. We'll come back to that. Um, it involves auto autoantibodies, so we can think of that ANA test, again, being something we could do. And the autoantibodies are against desmosomes. So this is super important here. Um, it has multiple painful ulcers preceded by bole, so big fluid-filled vesicles, and they pop and leave these um, painful, painful ulcers behind. It also has um, positive Nikolsky's sign. 
So Nikolsky sign is named after a Russian physician, and it's a phenomenon where slight rubbing of the skin or mucosa results in exfoliation of the outermost layer. So in the dental setting, you could blow air with the air water syringe on oral mucosa, and you could kind of see it lift off and start to shed. So that would be a positive Nikolsky sign. Treatment again with corticosteroids. So pretty much everything besides angioedema, we're using corticosteroids. And the other is mucous membrane pemphigoid. So sounds similar, pemphigus and pemphigoid, but they're a little bit different in some big ways. So Whereas pemphigus was supra-basilar, pemphigoid is sub-basilar. And that's because the autoantibodies, instead of attacking desmosomes, are attacking the basement membrane. So otherwise, it's the same as pemphigus. So let's take a look at this picture here. We have pemphigus on the left, and you can see that where that um, mucosal layer is lifting off is because all these autoantibodies are attacking the desmosomes that attach the epithelium together. And then in pemphigoid, those autoantibodies are attacking the basement membrane. So it's lifting off from the dermis, or um, if you're thinking of the mucosa, the epithelial layer, again, is detaching, but this time a little bit deeper. So one way I remember this, which is, I guess, a little bit silly, um, is pemphigus is above, so it's higher up, pemphigus above, and pemphigoid is below or below. So you can think of probably a better way to remember this, but for me, this is one way to help differentiate pemphigus and pemphigoid, which are otherwise very similar in clinical appearance. All right, so that's it for this video. Um, if you found it helpful, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more oral pathology and other things dentistry. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you all in the next video.